How are you doing, everybody? So let me first take a second to introduce myself. I am Nicholas Kelly. Nick is fine. So who is Nick? I'm a lot of things. We'll get into some of those a little bit later. But for starts, I am a registered and licensed dietitian. I have my master's in food nutrition. I am an author, a speaker, and an artist. And most importantly, I am a 35-year-old male living with cystic fibrosis. CF has given me so many challenges and so many unique obstacles. However, it has also given me the opportunity to express passion and, and showcase that passion in different forms. I'm never at a shortage of work. I always have something going and going. One of the things that I love the most is being able to use my gifts. One of those being art. I love art. I am. I was a professional dancer for 12 years. I have been a poet for as long as I can remember. Um, I draw, I DJ, I do photography. So the arts is what fuels me. And being able to use those skills and those passions to help kind of bring not only awareness, but attention and a feeling of inspiration to the CF community and beyond is really important to me. <clears throat> so with that being said, I have a special treat for everyone that really exemplifies what I mean about passion and how I utilize my art and my passion to help build awareness and invoke a feeling of understanding and giving. So check this out. I have a dream. It's that simple, or at least they say, I have a dream that one day CF will stand for Cure Found, but it's profound that that one day always has looked like someday, but that someday is always so far in the future, I can't see it, it's like miles away. Miles away, I float to the ground like Miles Morales, only to have somebody look at me like, oh, he's stylish, but he don't understand the pain that I feel because all my love is on the outside. Everything I do comes from the outside. So as I raise myself up, I begin to look to the sky, understand why, that this is something that needs to be, and everything I do, I do it for the we. Everything I need to be, everything I need to see. Understand, I don't do it for the me, I do it for the we. Understand, I don't do it for the me, I do it for the we. One more time, just in case you didn't understand why I have passion and why I live. I don't do it for the me, I do it for the we. I do it for my family, I do it for the CLE. That's a part of me, but understand, when I look at these people, they never get to see the insides of my outside. They don't understand with every breath I take, with every breath I take, with every breath I take is another moment for my lungs to quake. I'm sitting here looking at fate. Like, why did you choose me? Why did you put this pressure on my back? I understand that you thought I could be strong enough to carry and hold this pain with me. I'm going insane on the inside. All I can think about is the day that someday CF will stand for cure foul. And I find myself looking to the sky, asking myself, wondering why. Shell, everyone and you can be. I do it for them. I do it for the we. I do it for my family. I do it for the people that I say breathe easy to. Understand that these people are part of me. Everything in my life I drive to be. I drive for thee. So when I say I have a dream, that means they have a dream. That means I have a dream. That means everything we can see. That means one day CF will no longer be bound by me. That I do not have CF. CF will no longer have me. Understand my drivers will keep me alive. And my dream is that sometime we we won't have to talk about thee. So I hope you guys liked it. If you didn't, please don't let me know. <laughs> I kid, I kid. Um, so that right there, that poem is called Rise Up for a Dream. I actually did that poem for a CF fundraiser gala um, by the Breathe Foundation. And the idea of that poem was to really just express that idea of today, tomorrow, and someday in the future, there could be the hope for a better future. The thing that is interesting about that poem is it actually was never supposed to happen because I had already done the piece for the event. And it was when I was living in San Diego, it was a hot day. So we had been out there for a while. So I get in front of the camera, I'm like we're all done. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna sit here for a second. Let me decompress for a while. And I'm sitting there and that's why I'm like bent down. And I just sit there and I just start rocking. 
and I just start speaking. And that's where that open line comes from. Like, so I have a dream, or at least they say. And so at all that, as I'm sitting down there talking, and then how I eventually used to rise myself up, all of this was not planned. I was only down there, and the reason I had to get up is because I was hurting my knees. I had been down there for a while before the camera actually started rolling. Um, because of that, so people may not believe it, but I promise it's true, is that 100% of that poem was freestyle. I didn't write any of it. I didn't rehearse any of it. None of that. That's 100% freestyle. And the reason that's so important to me is because it's the purest example of getting lost in your art. When it was done, I literally had to go. Everyone's sitting there like, like, yo, that was crazy. And I'm literally sitting there like, I have no idea what I said. Like, not one word. I couldn't have recited it. Now I can because I've listened to it 800 and 207 million times. Yeah, those numbers. Yeah, those are real numbers. So that's not a lie either. Take that. So I, what I did was after time, I just got so enamored by the fact that I was able to get so lost in my own creation. Now that leads me to another point. So everyone always goes after they fit, realize I freestyle, it goes, oh my gosh, I can never do that. How do you do that? So I'm about to give you a little bit of sauce. Just a little, little bit of the sauce right here. Mm, yep, that's what I'm gonna do. And so how does that work? So I've been doing poetry for a very long time. So it's a skill, like anything else, you captivate and cultivate over time. However, some things that you can do to improve those is word exercises, pace exercises, and uh, intentionality. So I'll explain each. So word exercises would be taking a word and building a concept off of that. So if I give you the word record we'll go record so okay i think of the word record now i need to create a concept around records so we have records we have record players we have music we can have disco we have dance so in essence you might do something of the nature of all i do is want to break records with every record i break i'm like a dj on the floor breaking down records and as i break down i break down like a breaker trying to break down the breaking bridge so in that same concept, I've used the word breaker. Breaker is a form of a dancer who break dances, which is a form of a DJ who breaks records. And starting by breaking records is like a record you might hold and a record. So you find ways to build inside of that one word. Now, after that, you do multiple words. So you keep challenging yourself with multiple words. So I'm going to do another quick example for you. So we'll go cell phone and mouse okay i spend all day searching on the computer looking at that mouse click click that sounds like my cell phone ringing let me go pick up that let me think about how i can get from one line to the next and then from that next line to the next and actually i'm just gonna call it quits i'm calling my best there you go see I had to give you a second you caught it so that's where you just use like word and just use association, like word association. And that's how you start to get really be able to freestyle that in, in real time. <clears throat> so you have word association, you have word exercising, and then the last one is intentionality. So one of the things I learned when I was a uh, professional dancer was always dance with intention, <clears throat> always dance with intention and dance, make your movement meaningful. No wasted movements. So yeah, as you're freestyling, you're just moving, you know, all of this, doing all that, hey, all of that. So you're moving. However, just like in that poem, I was freestyling, but it came out so coherent and so cohesive because I understood in my mind what needed to be done. I understood my objective because you come to a skill where your skill is so refined that you're still in control even when you're lost in the moment. And so that is the big example. That's how that works. So being able to be lost in the moment, but still know, okay, okay, I need to do this. Okay, I'm freestyling, but I need to make sure I do best. So you're able to like dual work at the same time. And that's why in that entire two minutes, like two minutes, 30 seconds, like there's nothing obscene. There's no, there, there's really nothing that repeats unless it's purposely repeated. That's because I'm thinking consciously as I'm speaking, even though I don't know what's being said. 
So those are three elements to really improve your freestyle ability as a poet. And then the simple one is just write it. Be mindful of what you write. The more you write, the better you become with words. It's just like people say, the more you read, the more words you know, the more knowledge you're able to take. Same with writing. The more writing you do, the better with word choices, the better you understand uh, what you want to put out there. And then the last thing is uh, pacing. So I started my poetry at a very slow pace, like most people. So the highlight of this world is that the world is trying to highlight the people that no longer need to be highlighted. The world in itself is trying to find and navigate an opportunity for everyone to see. And when everyone can see, everyone will start to look at me. And when everyone starts to look at me, I need to take a step back because I want to hide in the limelight. I'm no longer looking here trying to find a fright. So as I got more comfortable, my pace can actually pick up and then I can pull it back down. But it starts with that very slow tempo, rhythmic pace. So that's like the sauce, okay? That's like, I just gave you Nick's like ingredients for how I kind of do what I did. And now when I talk about that, okay? So that's what like the how the sauce is made. But let me tell you why that important it is for me. And because just like in that poem, you see raw passion. That's what I'm able to display. I'm able to display. So passion is something I have. It is an attribute I have. I am passionate. But inside of that, the feelings that you do, passion is not the feeling. Like it is not a feeling in the list. It's passion is the skill. Passion is the attribute. Because feeling, pain, hurt, hope, defeat, triumph. Those are all pat, like all like feelings I feel inside of that poem, which allows it in my estimation, to resonate with people because of the subject matter is me. I feel like I wanted people to see my heart sitting right here. I wanted them to see it. I wanted them to look right dab in my face and understand this is the real of what's happening to me. My favorite line in the whole poem is people think, my favorite line in the whole poem is everything in my life I decide to be, uh, everything in my life I drive to be, like I drive to be. So that that idea, like everything in my life I strive to be. Like I, I had to strive to get there. It was worth it. But just like everything else, great things came from life. And some of those things, some of those things that happen are forced from tragedy as well. And Shell, Shell's my sister who passed, and she's like basically one of them like my heart. And then everyone else, breathe easy. That's what that's for. So finding that inspiration, <clears throat> finding that ability to say, okay, this is what it is. Now, when you have that, why why this media? I can't tell you this is the best. It's not the only medium. I can't tell you it's the best. But for me, there's something freeing about being able to just put it out there. Because I tell y'all 100%, not all of them are good. I can give you four freestyle poems and one out of every four might be good. And point one out of every four is going to be what you just saw. So, but it still is that it, it releases you. You're unbound by your own thoughts. There's so many times we caught up in our own thoughts. So freestyling allows you the ability to just go after it. Doesn't always have to be good. Doesn't always have to be right or wrong. You might say some words that make no sense. That's fair. But as you get older or as you get more mature, mature with uh with your your speaking and your freestyling. <laughs> <laughs> so as you get more mature with your freestyling you're able to incorporate that in a different way and it allows you just the ability to be free you're not bound by rules that's the beauty of poetry there's so many different types you have uh like mine is more cadence heavy poetry so very cadence heavy very rhythmic Understand that's why I need to understand everything in life. I need to be everything in life. I like to see, to see what I need to be. With every breath I take, with every breath I take, with every breath I take, this moment before my lungs quake. I'm sitting here looking at fate. Why, why did you choose you? Why did you? That, all that right there. So that that is how you kind of progress inside of your own style. And as you build it up, you're able to go through it. Well, the reason I say all this, and the reason that this is so important is not, not only is passion the single most important, I think the single most attractive thing one person can have, it allows you to be empowered. You get to be empowered by yourself. 
you get to be empowered by your own skill set. You get to be empowered by empowering others and others get to be empowered from you. Like an amazing cycle when you share yourself, you share part of your passion. It allows you to discover who you are. It really can give you an insight to get into who you are by the things you write, the things you say, the things that kind of give you that little tingle. Like, like for me, every time I see that poem, I get a little bit of tingle like, man, that might be the, that's not might be, that's the fa my favorite poem I've ever, ever done. Because there's just every part of what I want art to be is expressed in that two minutes. And then, you know, the bravery, bravery, is an interesting one because when I think of things like that, it's more about freedom. Like bravery is the idea of like having courage and things like that. The courage is just to try. Allow yourself to be free. Allow yourself to be okay. You mess up, and you don't have to. You don't have to do it for the world. That's another thing. Your poetry or your art does not have to be for the world. It could be for you. It could be what your therapy is. Like I have things that dance is my therapy. I don't perform professionally anymore. I retired. I'm old now, but I I still do it because it's part of my therapy, my personal therapy. Poetry was the same way. I didn't perform poetry for a while, and then I got back into it. Every month, I remember, this is a hey, this is home base. It was before I had anything else. Before I had nutrition. Before I had speaking. Before I had all my other options, I had poetry. It was me and my the me a piece of paper and a pencil, and we just express and so those are the things that allow you to continue to push yourself into territories that are exciting that push yourselves into places that give you hope give you an opportunity and more importantly it just gives you a chance we're so bound so often we're tied up where we, we strangle ourselves off for whatever reason that might be. But art, art is one of those pure ways to just open it up. And that's what I, that's what I wanna do. That's what I try to do. Um, yeah, so CF stuff, okay? Just, just so you know. <laughs> so, but with all that and all of that, how it has impacted me, how it's impacted my life, how it's given me guidance, how hopefully it's given you something. At the least case scenario, you said, I saw something cool today. Best case scenario, you saw something cool that you want someone else to see. And hopefully that can inspire them. Like, that's the goal. You know, sometimes you see something cool, you like, you don't like, that's fine. Sometimes you see it and it inspires you, or sometimes it inspires you so much you want to use it to help inspire someone else. And so with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and drop y'all a little something, uh, a little something exclusive right here. I'm going to drop, I'm going to get, get y'all one. Here we go. Um, whew. So, okay. So here it is what we're going to, okay. I have my friend. She's going to drop and give me a line, real, a word real quick. And then I'm going to go off that. So my friend Stacy, I need you to uh, give me a word and I'm going to build something off of it for the people, for the people. Art. Art. Okay, I love it. All right. <clears throat> I'm trapped in a painting of this world, in this world we call life. Everything around me is an art form, but I form and I transform this art to something that people can only see when they look at me. And I'm not talking about I'm exclusive, not exclusivity. I'm talking about as I paint this vivid picture with this brush, as I stroke my words on the page, I'm looking at someone like, this is more than a fad, this is more than a craze. I am here to stay. My art is something that is be ever, ever, ever going to go. It's never, never, never going to go. Ever, 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 ever like an outcast. I'm looking here standing like an outcast as my art goes alien, and alien, and I am an alien. I'm out of this world, Martian face, looking at me like, yo, I'm a disgrace with taste because my taste buds on the phone as I sit here and flow on my phone. Whoo, look at it. I'm going to run that back just in case you don't understand. I am a Martian and my taste is a taste buzz. And as I taste these taste buds on the words that I play, these playing on my words that no longer can say, I can no longer sit on my tongue. I'm too hot. 
spicy time. I'm looking at this, looking at the watch, man, that's Dame time. Look, I'm dollar sign. And I'm not dollar sign because I'm looking for the capitalistic capital approach. I'm looking for the art in it. I'm looking for the art that sees and A-R-T is me. You know what? Let me go ahead and let y'all understand that everything that I do and everything I do, I do it for the we. I mean, I'm not doing it for the me. I do it for the we. One more time, in case you didn't understand, I don't do it for the me. I do it for the we. And that's how my A-R-T gets out to the world so everyone can see that me, K-I-D, is here and meant to be only because the art stands for me and I stand for he. Man, I ain't talking about he as in gender roles. I'm talking about playing here. I said, I'm sitting here looking at, I'm on a roll, Jack. I'm not going back. Yo, sit down, hit the roll, Jack. No, look, I'm waiting off the map. I'm waiting off the block and off the block, I shoot jumpers to the stain. I'm looking here, looking at fame. I'm sitting here waiting for a second so that this stain no longer becomes a stain on my fame. And this art can no longer be purified and no longer can be questioned. It can no longer be tainted and target and target. It can no longer be toxified by these people who no longer want me to keep me alive. It can be no longer taught by these people who no longer have an opportunity to see that these people are who I want to be and these things are what I want to see. And I want my art to be pure, no faith, no chase. I'm looking at, look, this is the face of art, A-R-T, that's me. So, yeah, y'all, I appreciate it. Like I said, this is, I am Nick Kelly. I appreciate y'all rocking with me for a little bit, um, being able to share my art, being able to share my passion, and just being able to share exactly what I love. And more importantly, the thing I love most is being able to share art and share passion, because I think everyone, everything and everyone in this world is more than what they can be when they find passion. Passion is the single greatest thing a person can have and is the single most attractive quality a person can uh, endure to strive for. Find passion, because with passion comes purpose. With purpose becomes a ability of happiness and long-term enjoyment. Find passion, embody passion. Utilize passion, release passion. So with that being said, hi, I'm Nick Kelly. I appreciate y'all rocking with me. It's been uh, so fun. Shout out to the whole CFRI team. You know, uh, there we go. Mm, mm, uh, all right, y'all.